Now, the other area that the Albanese government has well and truly overpromised and underdelivered on is on the energy front. For a country that is rich in resources, it is just madness to see how much bills have gone up lately and how much they are expected to continue to rise. Nothing better typifies how we have squandered what should be an energy abundance than the report from the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission that has warned Australia's East Coast gas supplies will be precarious through 2024, with the grid reliant on favourable weather to prevent spikes. You heard that right. Our energy security and affordability now depends on the weather. Joining me now to discuss what this means for you is energy expert Saul Kovonik. Saul, welcome to the program and thanks for sharing your time with me. Saul, explain to me how we have found ourselves in a position where we have to hope that the weather is good to be able to afford to use electricity. Thanks, Amanda. And let's be clear, um, the government's not just relying on mild weather next year, they're also relying on our coal generators uh, managing to operate consistently, despite the fact that there's a lot of underinvestment there, and in the renewable rollout actually happening on time. Uh, so you actually need all three of these things to happen in order to have this um, you know, surplus. So the surplus is really a furphy. Um, Really, what we've seen here is it's all pain and no gain from Labor's East Coast gas policy. You know, we've seen unprecedented damage to the investment environment for energy and gas, and we've hurt Australia's reputation internationally with our long-standing trading partners like Japan. Now, when a government makes a policy like this, there are obviously trade-offs where you might say we're willing to make those concessions and those trade-offs in order to bring down prices for end users. But the craziness about the situation here is end users are actually still worse off. Now, if you look at the details of this ACCC report, it confirms some of our worst fears. It shows that contracting, short-term contracting of gas this year, since Labor introduced its gas price cap, that contract has fallen off a cliff. It is down over 80% for the data they've got since they introduced the gas price cap. Prices for most end users are still closer to $20 a gigajoule, which is probably higher than it would have been if there'd been no intervention at all. And gas buyers are showing that they are finding it more difficult to secure gas over the next few years as well. So we've taken a big hit to investment environment, our international reputation, but there's been no benefit. In fact, the only thing this policy seems to have achieved is to really give some money away from gas producers and giving it to big retailers like AGL and Origin, who are even stronger, kind of like have a more of an oligopoly position in our gas supply industry. And I think that's, you know, Labor won't admit it in their words, but if you look at their actions, they've essentially admitted they've made a huge mistake on their gas policy and the latest form there, the, what they're calling the code of conduct for gas, actually almost amounts to exempting everybody from their own policy because they know it won't work.